Okay, so the first thing you want to do is set the hook firmly in the vise. Uh, make sure that it's in there good and tight and firm. We're going to be putting a little bit of pressure on the shank of this hook, so you want that in there nice and tight. I'm going to be using a 6 aught Primrose Danville thread, um, mainly for demonstration purposes, but I do use this thread quite a bit um, when I don't want the thread to change the color of the material that I'm putting on the hook. I'll use primrose, like a, uh, for instance, like a, a bright colored tag. I want the underbody to be in primrose and then put the, the floss over the top of it. And then when it gets wet, it doesn't change. So I use primrose quite a bit. Um, but for this fly, normally I'd be using a darker, like a six aught black. So we're going to start the thread with just a couple turns. It doesn't take a lot to get it started. And we're right ahead of the point of the hook. And we get that turned. And the first thing that we're going to add to this fly is a tag. And we're just using silver, silver tinsel. And the way I secure this is I, I reach around the front of the vise or the back, depending on which way you're looking at it. And I just bring it up and lock it underneath that first turn of thread. And then I, I'm not sitting there fumbling. I can just put one, one turn over that, lock it into place, and I can pull it down to where I want the tag end to be positioned. Then a couple turns, and if you watch this thread as I'm putting the thread on, I'm not overlapping any of the turns. Thread control for any fly tying is, is, is crucial. The less thread, the better the fly. So then we're gonna just take that tinsel and we're gonna wrap it down the bend of the hook. making sure that each turn butts up tightly against the, the last. And then we're going to stop when that is hanging right in between the point and the barb. And then we'll just go back up the shank doing the same thing. No overlapping here. Just bring it forward, touching each turn all the way back into the, or back to the tie-in point. And then I will here, I'll take a couple turns of thread off and then I'll catch that with a couple new turns of thread. You'll see as I tie, as I'm going through this, I'm constantly putting thread on, taking thread off, and that way I can control the amount of thread that I put on the, the hook. And I'm going to just clip my tag end so they're both the same length usually like to have them end right at the return um, where this iron, the eye comes around and the, the iron comes back and stops. It's called the return. That's usually where I like to stop all the tag ends so I have a very symmetrical body. All right, and then for the tail, I'm gonna be using just a, a tippet. This is orange golden pheasant tippet, dyed purple. And what I do is I just take the whole feather and I'm going to strip off the barbs that I'm not going to use. Just clean them right off. And I look at length and I'm going to come in. I'm going to clip the center stem right out of the center of this. And when I fold these back, that's my tail. By leaving the barbs on the stem, I maintain that crisp line that I want at the end of my tail. They all line up naturally. I just work that into position. Then gauge with my right hand. I want this tail to be just right to the bend of the hook. Lock in with my left hand and a couple securing wraps. First one kind of loose. Second one 
pull either straight up, straight up or straight down to lock that into place. And that tail should be right where we want. Okay. And then here again, I'm gonna clip this tag in right up to where that return ends. Then the rib for this fly is the pearl, mylar, flat, tinsel. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come in underneath that hook, lock it into place, one light turn, pull the tag into where it should be, and then lock it with a couple good turns. Move that back, put it in my spring, keep it out of the way. I'm gonna build a dubbing loop just by taking the thread around my fingers, about six, seven inches, a couple times around the loop to lock it. And then I'm just gonna wrap my thread forward. Try not to allow the materials to spin. And that way I'll get a good symmetrical body. They start to spin, we'll just move them back. And then I wanna end this thread where I'm gonna end the body. And that's just about two eye lengths um, back from the, the base of the eye right here. So if you, if you picture the length of the eye right here and add two of them, that's about where I want it to end. Okay. Then I'm going to load this dubbing loop with dubbing. And I, this, this fly has a jointed body, meaning that it has three sections. And I want these three sections of dubbing to be the same, equal in the amount of material. Now this gets a little bit tricky when you're trying to do it for the first couple times, but as you start to get a little bit of experience doing these bodies, you'll, you'll, it's almost just becomes a second nature to put the right amount of each material in this dubbing loop. And we have a kingfisher blue and then a dark blue. I'm just loading that loop up. And I, so I get the same amount for both colors. Then I'll add my third color, which is a dark blue, kind of a cobalt, even purple. You can use just about any kind of dubbing for this. I prefer natural dubbings, but anything, anything will work. And then once I've got that loaded with all the three different colors of dubbing, I'll give that loop a spin. And that traps those fibers in the loop. And then before I bring this body forward, I'm going to take just a little bit of Velcro and loosen some of those fibers that were trapped during the, the spin. And then when I'm happy with that, I'll just bring my body forward. And any of these fibers, as they get trapped, I'll pull them back. Get out of the way. And then we just move that body forward, making three equal sections and ending right where the thread ends. And if I did it right, I shouldn't have any extra, any extra dubbing. Catch that. Make sure you catch that good and tight because we're going to take 
that Velcro again and hit that fly and really pull those fibers up and get them standing up. And the next step, we take our ribbing and just bring it forward, kind of snaking it through those fibers. Five turns is the old classic standard. I'm just kind of trying to pull that in as tight as I can against that shank. There's our five turns and a catch. Now don't clip your tag end here because we're going to come back again with the Velcro and relieve those fibers that we trapped. And that way I can come back now and undo my rib and give it a good little tug to make sure that it's tight. Now, if you clip it before you do that, you run the risk of pulling that rib out with the Velcro. And we just clip our tag ends. And we've got our body. Now that body is a little heavy for what I like. So I'll come back with my tweezers and just kind of pluck out, pluck out the long ones, the flyers, the ones that don't look right, any globs, kind of loosen it up a little bit. And, you know, I like to see that tag. I mean, we put it in there, we might as well see it. I want to cover it up with dubbing. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and put a hitch in this and get rid of that primrose and go to our dark thread because we want a dark thread for the head. I'm really trying to remember not to crowd that eye. And any of these flyers right here, I, I don't know, it just bugs me to have stuff out of place so I'll give them a clip and if I can't get them with that I'll come in with my cauterizing tool I just get rid of anything that's gonna cause me grief when I go to finish that head off You gotta remember to turn around and look at, see what you're seeing. Make sure it looks right there. Looks good to me. Okay, now we're gonna add a uh, collar. We're just gonna use schloppen. You wanna high grade your feathers when you're looking for a good collar. And what I'm, what I'm looking for is a feather with the proper length barbs. Um, it doesn't have any growth marks or hasn't been eaten by bugs and it's clean and, and I don't I don't like this fluffy stuff on my collar so the barb's got to you know just be long enough I'll kind of gauge it to length pluck that off and then go to work and when I get this prepare this feather to be wrapped on I'll gauge the length of the barb that I want the longest barb to be because they obviously they get a little bit shorter as they go down. So I gauge that length and then I clean the stem of everything. This way when I finish wrapping this, I'll be tying down nothing, nothing but stem. And then I just kind of, you know, just about the length of the hook is about the amount of Hackle that I want to wrap in. And I'll just pull it all back and then cut a wedge off this. Just get rid of the tip. Cut a small wedge. And that wedge is what I'm going to tie down. I'm going to come in and I'm going to lock that wedge down. See if I can do it on the side you're, you're seeing. 
what I want to do is I want to lock that wedge down on the side of the hook just as firm as can be. If you try to tie that in on top or in the middle here, those two irons coming back that form the eye um, creates a valley. And no matter how much tension you put on the thread, it's gonna pull right right off. But um, go on the side, either side. It's easier on this side, obviously. Um, we've got that all connected in now, and I'm gonna fold the barbs to the rear and start my wrap. And I want these turns, I don't wanna overlap any of these turns. I want them just to go right in front, each turn to go right in front of the last. I'm gonna work those barbs back with each turn, making sure I'm not trapping any and making sure everything's flowing to the rear of the hook. And this last wrap. Now see, I've got nothing but stem there. So when I come in to lock that down, I just come in with a couple, couple securing wraps, and then I can take that stem and kind of pull on it to make sure that I've got that collar set nice and firm. And then not a whole bunch of securing wraps because you don't want to build that head up for this next step. And you can go ahead and get rid of your tag end. That keeps everything nice and tidy. Up front. All right, for the wing, we're going to use calf tail. And uh, when you're looking at calf tail, this actually was on the same rack. Dyed purple calf tail. You've got to go through each calf tail and high grade them out to what you like. Um, this one, um, I do like. Nice color. Uh, the hair is kind of twisted and fuzzy. Where this one, you've got a little bit straighter. Um, and it's a little bit darker. So it's just personal preference. But we're going to go and build our wing from this stuff right here. So you just, you just pull it back, grab your chunk, and snip it off. You want to clip that off as close to the to the height as possible. Then now, um, I like to stack my. I like a really tidy, tight wing. So I'm, we're going to stack this. And we're also going to clean all the shorter hairs out of this before we we put it in the stacker. So I look at it and I kind of make sure that they're. No long flyers first, and then pinch that really hard, and then pull all the shorter fibers out. And then I'll also hold on the end here and pull this way. And I just work that. If I've got any really kind of weird ones that aren't behaving, I'll just get rid of them. So if you got some. hair that's not, not kind of all the same, it's going to be hard to stack. So you want all those hairs to be the same. Then you take your hair stacker, tips first, and then give it some good hits. Work it quite a bit until you get it all lined up look at it and if it looks good go for it if not put it back in give it some more work and then once we get them all aligned you can pull them out and look at what you've got there work it if you got ones you don't like get them out of there And then we're going to gauge this wing, and I want it to be 
almost as long when it's on, as the shank of the hook. So when it's propped up, it lines up just barely behind the body. Once I've got that, I'll come in and pinch it. And then I'm gonna clip these hairs just as straight as I can, right at where I wanna tie them in. Okay, and then I get my head cement. Get a drop of head cement. And put it right on the edge, end of these hairs, right where we're gonna tie it in. This is the penetrating, really kind of thin head cement. Then once we've done that, put it right where we need to set it. And a soft turn gets us started. And then just crank it on down. You want to see some of that head cement squirt out. That's looking good. Then, before I put the whip in this, I'm going to take and grab one more drop of head cement. Put it right on top. And then throw my whip over the top of that cement. One's plenty for what we're doing. Make sure we're okay. What you're seeing, I get my Velcro out, give it a little bit of work. got some pliers I don't like. I'll just pluck them out. And then this may take a couple coats, but I just come back with another drop of head cement. Shouldn't take a lot because we've Pretty much soaked that all the way through with the steps getting to this point. And that completes that fly. The Bulkley Blue.